Hey guys and girls, Gleb here, how is it going? I'd like to invite you to watch a free tutorial from 50 modeling issues from hell, the ultimate collection of 3D modeling problems and how to fix them. So this one is about the boolean operations and how they end up producing non-watertight or non-solid or non-three-dimensional meshes. Uh, this is a pretty common one, so I hope it will be useful. Let's get started. Boolean operations produce non-watertight meshes. What a surprise, that's classic. Obviously, we would like Boolean ops to behave more or less predictably all the time, but sometimes we get this instead, and tell me that you haven't seen that before. This hellish creature is called non-manifold geometry. But first, let's take a look at the setup that we have here. Here is a spherified cube, the slightly enhanced version of the UV sphere. Here we have a, f a bunch of boxes, each one of them hooked to the boolean uh, difference operation. And finally we have a cylinder over there. For the sake of visual transparency, I will activate the bounce mode instead of the wire mode within the viewport display. Mm -hmm. So in this tutorial we're gonna be going over the main uh, non-manifold issues usually associated with the boolean operations what causes them and how to get them back to where they belong, to hell, I mean. So let's start with the issue number one. The missing geometry that makes everything non-solid. When you inspect your models and you find out that Boolean operations behave in a kind of a weird way, maybe they erase a part of the geometry or don't work at all, it's a signal for us to get into the edit mode and visually inspect what's going on there. I see some duplicate geometry, I think, and we can prove it really easily. In Blender there is the Mesh Analysis tab in the viewport overlays. In order to have it enabled you need to first enter the edit mode, obviously. So right now we are in the intersect mode, so Blender highlights the overlapping polys for us in red. And in addition to that we can check the geometry for consistency in the 3D Print tab in the right hand panel that you can bring open by pressing N. Uh, but first, in the add-ons tab, we need to find the 3D Print Toolbox add-on and activate it if you haven't done it already. Then it will appear within the right toolbar. And it has a number of very useful checks. For example, we can check for intersections and we find out that we have 17 intersecting faces. Or we can check all and enjoy the list of potential errors that our mesh has. Non-manifold edges, 76, very nice. I'm especially interested in those edges over there. Obviously something dead wrong is going on here. We can safely delete those edges by hand, uh, but slightly more convenient way would be to clean it up automatically. Like for example, we can click Make Manifold within the Clean Up tab but unfortunately it produces a pretty strange geometry in this area. I think we can undo the operation and try the manual method. What I'll do is select every vertex by pressing the A key, then right click, merge vertices, merge by distance. Here we can see that we removed 67 vertices. Practically that means that we killed the duplicate vertices that probably produced the non-manifold effects when combined with the boolean ops. And now I'm fixing the red polygons, which were intersecting as well. Well, we, we have a few more errors here and there, we can fix them by clicking make manifold. Now it did a great job of fixing the mesh for us, so let's explore some more non-manifold strangeness. Beware of interior faces. If you're encountering the issue that looks kind of like the previous issue that we have discussed. And on top of that, after visual inspection, you see kind of a break in the model. Uh, maybe you double check it by utilizing the check all command within the 3D printing checkbox. That may point you out to the interior face, just like you see here. That by definition means that your model is non-solid, non-three-dimensional even. So let's select uh, all interior faces in this case it's just this big face, and delete it. That's really simple once you identified the problem. The next issue is ripped edges. 
that's a typical issue that after some modeling operations or whatever, some parts of the mesh are not welded together. That is naturally leading to the mesh becoming non-sealed. We definitely need to fix it. Thankfully, it's very easy to fix, just make manifold. Or as before, we can merge the faces that are overlapping with other faces. Well, speaking of the devil, when you run into the problem where the boolean ops leave the mesh shallow inside, that's no good and that may suggest that something shady is going on behind the scenes. Almost 250 intersecting faces and if you remember the Z fighting video from this series, you will recognize it. It's Z fighting exactly. That means that polys are overlapping. Let's remove the doubles and we are done. And while we are on this wavelength, let's inspect the doubles, but not in the mesh itself, but in the Boolean object. This is one of the things that most certainly brings some non-manifold issues into existence. Uh, and at the same time, this is one of the things that is pretty tricky to spot. Look, this cube has a duplicate face, uh, though it's very hard to notice if you don't know where to look. So if you cannot track anything specific within the main mesh, uh, then chances are that the boolean geometry is somewhat broken. The spectrum of the things that can go wrong is the same, starting at ripped edges and missing faces to overlapping faces and broken normals. The reason why it can be a little bit confusing, like in this case, where it just simply doesn't work and everything se seems to be all right, is that by default, bool tool add-on and hard ops and everything else assigns the uh, bounds display mode to those objects. So we need to switch it back to textured or solid uh, to be able to see what's going on. Maybe the face is missing like we see here and that will lead to some uncertainties within the Boolean operations processing. As a rule of thumb, all objects that are used for subtract or intersect operations should be watertight, not just the mesh itself. The Boolean operands should be sealed as well. Okay, next. Another thing that I wanted to talk about is normals, namely flipped normals and normal strangeness as opposed to geometry strangeness. It looks a little bit faceted and suspicious in this area, but if we enable bevel, it will totally bite us. Uh, on the one hand, the shenanigans with normals are more or less forgiving when it comes to boolean operations. On the other hand, it's totally not, not recommended to mess it up. It will most certainly mangle some other things and even though it doesn't prevent the boolean operations from working correctly, uh, it will produce bad shading overall. So while we have an opportunity to implement an easy solution, let's use it. But first, let's make sure that we know what faces got flipped. Let's enable the face orientation within the viewport menu. And apparently the flipped faces marked in red need to be fixed as soon as possible. You can flip the normals back or even better, you can recalculate the normals. Select every polygon, go mesh, normals, recalculate outside or inside if that's what you need. But probably you should pick the outside option. Here I'm using the search menu to search for recalculate normals and apply it and forget about it because now everything looks more or less correct. Let's fix the sphere itself and we can call it a day. Normals can be a little bit tricky because by default they are kind of invisible and you need to know the symptoms, know the clues, so you can recollect the picture. Sometimes everything seems to be okay at the first glance, but anyway, the mesh is shallow, non-sealed, non-watertight, something is going on. And we can put the blame on the mirror modifier. No matter the bisect checkbox activated, the mesh is still broken. What happened here is this mesh is flat in the edit mode, is non-sealed, and the mirror modifier is meant to enclose it by copying it to the right side. And so we need to rearrange uh, the modifier stack a little bit to make sure that the mirror, mirror modifier comes first and so it encloses the object 
and then the rest of the boolean operation follow. Alternatively, we can make use of the solidify modifier, which name implies uh, that it will solidify the mesh for the purposes of making it solid. That's precisely the description of a good manifold, three-dimensional object, and the rest uh, will follow correctly. In fact, you can put it before or after mirroring, doesn't matter much, we'll change the look a little bit, depending on the changing normal. But anyway, let's take a look at some more issues, namely coplanar polygons. And, uh, it seems that I forgot the work in progress text over there, but anyway, I, I already regret the creative decision of showing the title first, and then having to explain it, and then arriving at the solution that we have already spoiled. But anyway, sometimes it happens that uh, the position of two objects is such that their faces overlap some of their faces, and that leads, in case of Boolean operations, to the missing polygons in the end. It's a pretty rare bug, very hard to reproduce even for tutorial. But anyway, here we go, coplanar faces. Now to link the subchapters together in a meaningful fashion, let, let's drop the co and just leave planar. Flat boolean object or planar boolean object doesn't work in the current version of Blender, which is 2.82. You have to solidify it or turn into three-dimensional objects in some different way. And funny enough, in Blender 2.79 it kind of worked when you switched the algorithm over to Carve or something like that. But anyway, here's a new glitch art performance for you, teleporting us in a different time and space, so we can explore the overlap threshold option that doesn't make any sense to me, and I'm constantly stumbling across this unknown, mysterious setting within the boolean modifier that causes total mayhem. It totally makes me question my sanity, but uh, the only explanation I can think of is actually that uh, this is one of those creative features that is the pathway towards glitch art. Alright, fantastic. It's such a pleasure when Boolean operations behave in a totally boring, predictable way. We all love it. Stability. Mm. But sometimes the hell break loose, and as usual, only you can fix it and whatever. Ooh, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It was 50 modeling issues from hell, the ultimate collection of blah blah blah. Modeling tips from hell and how to fix them all. That's the crucial part, how to fix them. Because we had an impression that we might scare everyone by simply mentioning the problem without the solution. But practically, 50 modeling issues from hell is at the same time 50 modeling solutions from hell, so everybody it's a win-win situation. Stay safe, drink more coffee, and we will change the world of computer graphics after I clean up my room.